We had a fantastic Seder last night. Did you guys have a Seder last night? You know, you gotta, you got to figure this out for yourself. I, I can't figure it out anymore for you. I really can't. I'm, 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 I can't tell you what to do. You know, it's, it's, and it's also kind of a waste of time trying to tell you what to do because you're going to do what you're going to do anyway. Human beings do what they do, right? And if the Holy Spirit can't get you to do stuff, surely I can't, right? So you got to figure it out. As a Jew, you celebrate Passover, right? As a Messianic Jew, I don't know. Some people don't consider us Jewish anymore. I'm very Jewish. In fact, I'm more Jewish than I've ever been. So I will still celebrate Passover. As a grafted-in Gentile, what feast should you celebrate? These are not Jewish feasts. You've got to get it into your head. They're the Lord's feasts. And if you belong to the Lord, you should feast with the Lord. But nobody's going to force you. But I would check out some of these feasts you do celebrate. Just look into them, man. Because Yeshua would come back and go, what the heck are you doing? You understand? You want to be like him. So you want to do what he did, right? Forget about what would Jesus do. What did Jesus do and just do it? So, look, you, you'll, you'll figure it out when he gets back, you know. He'll, he'll, he'll explain it to you. In the meantime, though, don't, don't think you're being Jewish. Try to be Godish. And try to, you know, follow the manual. Yes? Okay. The Seder was great. Today is going to be great, whether you like it or not. This is a time of, of to celebrate deliverance and freedom and overcoming and victory. You realize if, if there was no Seder, if there's no deliverance, if there was no Exodus, there'd be no Yeshua. They would have still been killing the babies to and under, and there would be no, no Jews. No Jews, no Yeshua. No Jews, no salvation. Don't you remember when he said in John 4, to the Samaritan, this Gentile, salvation comes from the Jews. What is so perplexing about that? This is preached all, this is John's gospel. This is Yeshua's words. This is one of the greatest stories ever told where he's talking to the Samaritan. And he said, you worship what you don't know. We worship what we do know. But a day is coming when we'll worship not just in truth, but in spirit and truth. It's not good enough to have the truth. you got to have the right motives of your heart. And it's not good enough to have the right motives of your heart because you could be so sincere and be incredibly sincerely wrong. This was a quintessential teaching that everybody teaches in every church. How do they miss the message? We worship what we do know, meaning we worship the truth. We've been given God's commandments. You guys are doing your own thing. There's only one thing that got Yeshua irate. When religious people were creating traditions of men. That just messed him up. He could deal with anybody and he could deal with any sin, but the religious people should have known better. And discipline starts in the house of the Lord. And he went after them with a vengeance. He goes, what are you guys doing? You're abrogating the ways of God with the traditions of men. Do you have any idea how traditional the churches are today? What are you going to do? I've been here 15 years. And I'm speaking to the same audience. In Macon, but we're speaking to 10,000 people around the world. We're going to read one of the Hallel Psalms. These are Psalms read during the feast, the three major feasts. Passover, Pesach, which unleavened bread is part of, and Shavuot, of course, a.k.a. Pentecost, and Sukkot, Tabernacles. These are the three pilgrim festivals. Why were they called pilgrim festivals? Because all the Jews had to go to Jerusalem and make a pilgrimage. Yes? So, 113 to 118 are the Hallel Psalms, the Psalms of high praise. In verse 1, in verse 1, in one sentence, God is saying three times the praise. It says, Hallelujah, or praise the Lord. Servants of Adonai, give praise. Give praise to the name of Adonai. That's, that's one sentence. So what's, what's the message of these, of these feasts? What's the message? 
praise and why we praise him because we were delivered we are being delivered and we will be delivered there's a exodus that was that is part of our historicity it's part of our history if you're grafted in according to the new testament and you're part of the commonwealth of israel then their history becomes your history so there's an exodus that was that we celebrate and we remember just like you have an anniversary what are you doing you're already married you're remembering so we remember that because that's right to do it's right to acknowledge God and say wow look what you did and then we remember the exodus that we have now through the blood of Yeshua filled with the Holy Spirit but that's not the best there's an exodus that's coming guys so when you see these things when you see the wars and the rumors of wars and you see crazy things happening don't look down look up because your redemption draws nigh your final exodus is coming this is Yeshua's words it's not my words It says, some will fall by the edge of the sword. Others will be carried into countries of the Goyim. And Jerusalem will be trampled down by the Gentiles until the age of the Goyim has run its course. The age of the Goyim has run its course. It's a done deal. It's going back and reverting back to Israel. It's done. The times of the Gentiles have come to a close. And then it says, when these things start to happen, he's talking about these last days, stand up. Don't lie. Oh, it's so horrible. What kind of believer are you? What's so horrible? He's saying you should stand up and you're cast down. Why so downcast, oh my soul? He says when these things start to happen, stand up. Stand the heck up. And hold your heads high. Don't look down. Hold them up. Because you are about to be liberated. You are about to be liberated. You are about to be liberated. Am I the only one excited for Yeshua's return? Man, you're missing it. You're getting involved in minutia. You're missing the big thing, man. The final exodus is coming. So, as long as you're up, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Servants of Adonai, give praise. Give praise to the name of Adonai. Blessed be the name of Adonai from this point. Forget yesterday, kid. This point and forever. Go forward. From sunrise until sunset. Start your morning. Look, if you don't hear the whispers of God in the morning, you're going to hear the shouts of the world. Stop running to your email. Stop running to the stupid social media. Stop running to your stupid blog. You won't hear from God and you'll be parched. You're not going to make it. The world keeps shouting at you and you keep listening. It says from sunrise to sunset, start first thing in the morning with the Lord. End your day with the Lord. I don't know his name is to be praised. I don't know his high above all nations, his glory above the heavens. He's sovereign. He's greatest in degree. He answers to no one. Who is like I don't know our God? It's rhetorical. Sitting in the heights, but humbling himself. He had a stoop lower than the angels. He's infinitely high, but he's intimately nigh. He raises the poor from the dust. Lifts the needy from the rubbish heap, from the project to the palace. That's my story. That's your story. How did you get saved? You were on the rubbish heap. Don't you remember? Well, I've been in church all my life. I've been a good person. Heck no, you haven't been a good person. And you're still not such a good person. Still selfish. Still talking about people behind their back. He raises the poor from the dust, lifts the needy from the rubbish heap in order to give him a place among princes, among the princes of his people. How does that happen? How do you go from the junkyard to the showroom floor? That's not good enough, right? Bigger house. It's not good enough, right? If you're looking for something that is greater than God's salvation, 
you're going to look and look and look and be very disappointed. All the, all the new reformation, affirmation movements, all the new things God's doing. God's not doing anything new because God's not new. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's doing the same thing. Pulling people out the ash heap and sitting them with princes. And guess what? It's all going to come back to the cross when all's said and done. With all the study, that's where it's going to come back to. Back to the simple message where we see God's grace and mercy and love and deliverance and we fall on our faces before him and say, how can I ever thank you? He causes the childless woman to live at home happily as a mother of children. When I was sitting there looking at Bernadette with her children, don't you know what was happening during the Passover? They were killing all the male babies, just taking them and murdering them in front of their mother. Not today. Hallelujah. Now a mother could sit with her children at Pesach to live happily as a mother of children. So what do we say to this? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Sorry I came on so strong, but somebody had to tell you. You come in here so downcast on Passover? I don't see anybody starving. Nobody walked here. Parking lot's full. You hear what I'm saying? You got a good night's sleep and a nice bed? That's a blessing, man. I got a nice bed, but I didn't get a good night's sleep. Very rarely do. So if you wake up after six, seven hours, hallelujah. And your body's regenerated, hallelujah. And your cells are replicated, hallelujah. You know? Rabbi, that's crazy. I, I never thank them for good sleep. That's your problem. Start thanking them for all those things, man. It's really hard to be miserable when you're thankful. So, Father, we are thankful. We are thankful, Father God, for Passover. We're thankful that you delivered us and we have the blood on the lintel and doorpost of our heart. Father, help us to bury the leaven and to rise up in the first fruits of the newness of life. Father, we can't do it alone, so thank you for Shavuot, that you fill us with your spirit and you give us the power to do it. And Father, thank you that when we fall your trumpet, we hear your trumpet, and we can come to you through the blood of Yeshua again and atone, and once again feel that Sukkot, feel your presence, your Holy Spirit in our tabernacle, and we can have Shabbat peace. That's what the feasts are all about, guys. You can write books on it, but that's what it's about. It's this cycle of God constantly, constantly, we constantly falling, constantly forgiving. Constantly falling, constantly forgiving. Constantly falling, constantly forgiving. You, you, you can't get that nowhere. I can't even get that from you. I say something that rocks your little boat and you're done. You're gone. See ya, Rabbi. See ya. It's your problem. Because it's your problem. And you're going to take it with you wherever you go. You're just going to mess up the next place. So what do we say? Don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. Get with the program. Stop looking at this one and that one and what this church is doing and what that one's doing. Start looking at what you're doing. Forget everybody else because it don't matter. Guys, at the final, in the final analysis, at the grand finale of this deal, you're going to sit with the Lord. <laughs> And then who are you going to blame? And then in the millennium, Satan's going to be tied up for a thousand years. Then who are we going to blame? Then we'll really have nobody to blame, right? Can't blame anybody else during the millennium. Can't blame Satan. He's tied up. Then who are you going to blame? By the same token, God is changing us. One day at a time, he's changing us. We're not, I know, I still have plenty of issues, but not like I used to have. He's changing me. By the power of his Holy Spirit, he's changing me. And he's changing you. If you're getting with him, he's changing you. You're not the same. Don't let anybody tell you that. You're just like your father. You're just like your mother. Ain't two snowflakes alike. Ain't two fingerprints alike. Identical twins have the same DNA, but they have different fingerprints. Just stay in it. 
Just stay in it. Let him keep working on you and working on you and working on you and keep chipping and chipping and chipping away. And at some point, we're going to look upon him and see him as he is because we're going to be just like him. Isn't that good news? All right. Father, I'm confident you're going to be blessed today. These are your feasts. You're throwing the party. You're the host. And you've invited all of us to come. Come one and all. You don't have to buy. You don't have to sell. Just come to the party and enjoy the presence of God. And that's what I'm going to do, Lord. I'm, I'm going to do that over the next couple of hours. I'm enjoying your presence. That's what I'm going to do. And if I'm the only one doing it, so be it. I'm going for it. More presence for me. So be blessed, Father. You deserve it. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen.